Early on in life, you're born with a large and robust thymus. Despite that being the case, we all lose it as a natural part of aging and disease. I'm Stan, and we're working on a cellular therapy approach for giving people a new thymus gland off the shelf. My background is stem cell biology and regenerative medicine. It was in working with folks like George Church at Harvard that I realized, hey, there are ways that we can apply these novel technologies and actually help them cross that valley of death into the clinic and ultimately real products for patients in need. We work on this fascinating tissue that sits in your chest called the thymus gland. The goal of Thymune is to really figure out how we can reboot the thymus gland through our off-the-shelf cell therapy in order to ultimately give people a new thymus to help you better defend yourself against all forms of cancer, infections, and even better respond to vaccines. That's why cells like T cells are so important. They're a natural part of your body's defense. And the job of the thymus is to actually train these T cells to help you recognize self versus non-self. So it's an absolutely critical function that this gland does. And it looks like within the first one to two decades of life, as that thymus gland rapidly shrinks, you get less and less of that new T cell production. The issue is, as you then lose those cells that have been trained and have been hanging around, and you can't make new T cells, well, one can imagine that then we're all, you know, it's just, it's just not a great situation to be in for our immune systems. I, I would say that maybe there was a bit of a eureka moment where I thought, okay, the science is getting to that point where we can really harness this to help patients in need. That time is coming, and in fact, when I founded the company, I thought the time was now. When I was thinking through building Thymune, I saw a natural confluence of various different threads in the field, right? One, cell therapy is approved. Two, pluripotent stem cell-based cell therapies were moving into the clinic, showing safety and efficacy. Three, the field of thymic biology was really evolving and getting to the point where we were understanding more and more how the science works, and then beyond that, how that science could be applied in a way to tackle diseases, threats, etc. So with all of these different confluences, I felt that a company like Thymune was going to be built, <laughs> and why not do it? Hey, welcome to our labs here at Thymune. So we just moved into the space about a month ago, and this room is one of our tissue culture labs. This is where the cell production happens. Here, the team is working on some of the research and development stage cell therapy product in order to tune, tweak, really optimize the cells that we're making, and ultimately then transition into an environment and production format that we could take into the clinic. We're walking from one of our tissue culture labs into the main lab area, and here, kind of all different forms of molecular biology. So the way that we're tackling this in terms of giving people a new thymus off the shelf is our technology allows us to mass produce these cells in a dish from something called human pluripotent stem cells. And we've shown that when we take these cells and we implant them into, for example, animals, you can actually form somewhat of a new thymus at the site in these animals. And on top of that, those cells are then able to crank up production of these new T cells that we talked about. And those T cells can go on and mediate a lot of the downstream immune functions that we expect. So that's the core technology. We also utilize single cell sequencing, machine learning, in order to one, understand, you know, what is it that we need to make? What are we making? And how do we make our product better and better with the best functionality, safety profile possible? But the end goal ultimately is to give, you know, a patient a new thymus off the shelf probably top of mind at the moment right now is thinking through how can we really scale up, meet the needs of the work that we have ahead of us in moving this towards patients in need. And that has all the different dimensions of space, team building, accelerating the work, making sure that we have the resources needed to, to get to, for example, the clinic. Thankfully, we have just an absolutely fantastic team that in all the different ways that they work are really so committed to advancing this towards patients in need. That really is the galvanizing principle for us. And yeah, we're going through a phase right now where we need to rapidly grow. And we're excited to bring more people into the fold and help enable them to do possibly the best work of their careers. For folks that are interested in that novel intersection between technology, science, medicine, entrepreneurship, et cetera, the most important thing is to understand the scope of the problem that you're trying to solve and then to work backwards and say, all right, you know, with that problem, with that unmet need, with that critical pain point in the field, what are the best ways that you could possibly tackle that? 
and then what are the best technological approaches you could utilize to solve that problem. And if you can connect all of those thoughts, then hey, you might have a business, whether you're in academia, uh, research, uh, working at a big pharma company, doing a smaller startup like ours, collectively for the field, it's all good if we can generate more products and take innovation to a point where it's really helping patients in need. So we were fortunate recently to receive some substantial funding via the new government agency called ARPA-H. And I believe we're probably the first uh, tech company funded under the Open BAA. At least that's been announced. The majority of it is directed towards taking our cells closer to the clinic for an initial application for very sick children that basically don't have a thymus gland and do die. And therefore, we're aiming to provide them our novel therapeutic in potentially a, a life-saving way. There's another component of the project that's looking at, all right, well, what is that big long-term application? What is something that has the potential to affect and impact all Americans, if not beyond, globally? Because ultimately, as we advance this field collectively and create new and novel therapeutics for patients in need, the people that win at the end of the day are those patients, right? And we think we have our role to play in terms of one of the most robust approaches in giving people a new thymus off the shelf. But hey, we're really standing on the shoulders of the giants. There's so much work that has been done in the field of thymic immunobiology, stem cell biology, et cetera, that has allowed us to get to where we are today. This is the first startup we featured that wants to effectively replace an organ of your body. I don't know if it is clarified in the video, but this grant that they've received, it's the first official grant given by this department of the US government. It's a big deal for the space. It means that more investment will be coming down the line, and it means that the government's really serious and cares about the stuff. We're living in an insane time. It's amazing that we have people working on stuff like this. Next week will be the last episode in our bio blackout. Huge shout out and thank you to our amazing sponsor, Pillar. Pillar is amazing. They are a VC focused on investing in founder-led biotech companies. I'm really picky with sponsors for S3, and I'll be honest, I don't think I will be as good of a pitch for them as going and checking out their website. It's one of the things that immediately sold me before even taking a call with them to discuss this partnership. An amazing group of people, it's eminent from just talking to them. In addition to funding great companies, also publishing and doing really cool stuff too. It's worth following them. I'm going to get back to work on next week's episode and the weeks after, uh, and this. By the time I record the next episode of this, we should have a live website for this new era of tech positive tech optimistic news. I have a lot to do. I will see you in a week.